Is your magic meter running low? Well, we've got a cure for you. Welcome to Disney Coast to Coast. Hey folks, and welcome to Disney Coast to Coast, the ultimate unofficial Disney fan podcast. I'm Jeff DePauly. And I'm Patrick Dougal. And Patrick. Jeff. My friend Brandon over at the Happiest Blog on Earth sent me a link to a video. Mm Mm-hmm at ridearchive.com mm-hmm. that frankly blew my mind. Frankly blew his mind. And I shared it with you. you. Shared it with me. And what did you think of this? It's a very interesting concept. Okay. Now, when I saw this, I, I'm i going to spoil it for you guys just so, you, spoil. just so you're not as disappointed as I was when I saw this. I didn't know it wasn't real. Oh. <laughs> okay? Uh, you did. Well, yeah. Okay. Don't say it like, oh, this is impossible, because this is awesome. And it's not like I thought, oh, this exists now. I thought it was something that the company was working toward. Uh, and I was like, whoa, whoa, mind blown. Let's, let's explain. what The site is? Ridearchive.com. Yeah, I know. I'm saying, like, oh. what, what's it like? It's basically. Oh, it's basically almost like a museum of past attractions that are no longer available. Exactly. It's... Uh, it's interesting because it takes us through, you know, what could be possibly a theme park experience or a virtual reality at home experience. Um, I Guys, when you're done with this, go check RideArchive.com and watch this like four minute video explaining this. We're going to actually interview the person who created this website and talk to him more about it, get in more detail and kind of what he's hoping to uh, achieve with this, Mm -hmm. but I'm just telling you as a person who didn't realize this was fake, mind blown. So uh, yeah, anything you else you want to add before we give him a call? Let's do it. Okay, we're going to call him. (laughs) Ladies and gentlemen, on the phone, we have Jay Huddy, the creator of uh, RideArchive.com. Jay, welcome to the show. Thank you so much, uh, Jeff, Patrick, and the uh, DCTC Nation. The DCTC uh, Nation. I like that. I usually call I, them I just, DCTCers, but uh, I like DCTC Nation. <laughs> that works for me. <laughs> That's good. It is coast to coast. It, it, it encompasses the nation and parts of Hawaii, from what I understand. Oh, yeah. Exactly. There we go. Um, so tell us, first of all, I, we were just talking at the introduction of the show how much we love your website. and. Uh-huh. I didn't realize oh, right, it wasn't nice. real the first time I saw it, so it was a bit disappointing when we found that yeah, out. Yeah, it's disappointing me for me too that it's not real. <laughs> so, where did this come from? Oh, I'm sorry. Actually, before we jump into the questions about the site, we have five questions that we ask all of our guests, so I, I definitely no, don't want to miss it. that. So, first yeah. off, yeah, favorite Disney animated movie. Oh, jeez. Oh gosh, guys. Um, well. I guess Toy Story 2 is technically animated, and that is the one it, that you know what? No, I got it. Yeah, I got to change that. It's it's Inside Out now. It's probably yeah yeah it's it yeah it, Toy Story 2 got bumped down a notch because uh, that was a whole new game that they brought to the screen, and uh, it uh, it it's I I'm still crying right now while I'm talking right now. I'm just how about a favorite Disney uh, ride? That's that's a great question. Existing or not existing? Because that is the theme of this interview, I think. It does oh, not uh, matter. Oh, great. Awesome. I can easily answer this. It is Horizons. It was... It's it's so tough. I, I was worried that you would ask me what ride is currently in existence that I would love. And uh, and I can't answer. It's like a first love. I've never gotten over it. Um, and even then, I mean, I went to Disney as a kid with like I had I had a uh, I had chicken pox and I went to Disney and I yeah 20,000 leagues under the sea was awesome uh, Mr. Toad's wild ride we had that on the east coast for a while it's nice to see that it's still alive and well on the on the west coast where I I just moved a few months ago so I'm I'm actually out here with you guys and uh and looking forward to like uh exploring more Disneyland which which was just an idea when I was growing up um but uh Horizons was the thing uh that really captured and I, and we can talk about it a little bit maybe later on because it, Horizons was the uh was the inspiration t- for this project really like when I uh, it was it was a soul crushing moment to to realize this horizons was no longer in existence and I think that's that was the germ of this idea mm-hmm. very cool do you have a favorite Disney song and this can be anything this can be movies oh. this can be theme parks TV yeah yeah um, I would have to say it's um, there was a record of 
of songs from the theme park rides that I had growing up. A, an Honest God record. Records, by the way, were these wax or vinyl discs that you would put onto a uh, thing called a record player, aptly named. Um, and um, uh, and I would listen to that at no end. And it had like the uh, theme song from uh, the um, uh, the very at this point I, from your podcast, kind of controversial uh, Main Street Electoral Parade. Uh, that is burned into my brain forever. Um, and uh, but it also had like um, you know the Haunted Mansion, Pirates. Um, you know, and then but I think of all of those songs on that record, if we're narrowing it down. It's got to be probably the kind of ukulele type Americana stuff from Liberty Square, you know. Like I really like that. Yeah, that kind of that's that's the one that sticks with me the most. And um, yeah, so I, I think I'm I, I I don't know the name of it, but I'm I for now I'm being completely unprepared. I'm sure like if you ask me a week from now, I'll change my mind. The Liberty it, Square uh, Loop. Let's just call it that. <laughs> yes. 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 Um, how about a Disney theme park show or parade live performance? <laughs> You know, I that's the thing that where you and I like you guys like we kind of like split past. I've never been into the shows. I I oh, okay, I, I I guess it would have to be Well, the Main Gosh. Street Electrical Parade is a, is, you know, a live performance. That yeah, that does bring me back. I never got to experience the one that takes place on the 7 Seas. Uh the, the, oh, the, 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 I've heard that's the water pageant. Magical. Yes. Um yeah, I, I you know, uh I don't know. Is the Indiana Jones Stunt Spectacular a show? No, yeah, it's absolutely. Definitely. That counts. Yeah. Uh, okay, I'll I'll go with that. That's that's probably yeah. That's that's the one that's coming to to mind uh, most immediately. So that must be my favorite. <laughs> okay. And then finally, do you have a favorite theme park? Oh gosh, um, I thought I I have two notes of I, I have two pages of notes that I made for this, and I'm completely unprepared for these questions. Um, so, uh, I would have to say it's, it's gotta be the experimental prototype community of tomorrow. Okay. So now let's jump into your website, uh, which as we were describing it at the beginning, but let's hear, how would you describe your website, ridearchive.com? Uh, thank goodness that I was able to write it and find a great narrator, Rachel West. Um, she works uh, in, in uh, I think, Iowa, um, and that she gets to speak about it better than I can. Um, I'm, I'm not good at pitching ideas, guys, um, but uh, that's that's one of the reasons. I'm, I'm very good at, like, putting them together and composing them, packaging them, and sending them out. Um, and uh, and if you really want to know what it's about, go to the video. But I mean, I guess um, you know, I would I would like to actually ask you, like, what do you think it's about? Like, what you've seen the video, what what do you think that the the ride archive is all about? How do you perceive it? I mean, to me, like I said, I thought it was a real thing, and actually, something interesting happened several years ago at one of the D twenty three expos at Disney's convention, where. Um, Somebody actually in the audience, I can't remember, it was some Imagineering panel, and somebody in the audience actually said, hey, have you guys ever considered archiving your lost attractions on DVD or something? Because they go away forever, and we never get to see them again. And it was really interesting because somebody big in the theme park community, I think it might have even been Tom Staggs at the time, made a yeah. remark like, hmm, we've never thought of that. And I'm like, are you serious? You've never thought of that? Because, like, literally, I've wanted that for years. Mm -hmm. So... Mm -hmm. I'm kind of honestly expecting the company to do something about it because the way that this person reacted, um, it actually seemed to pique their interest. So mm -hmm. when I saw your site, I thought, oh my God, they're actually doing this. This is fantastic. Mm, I'm so sorry. Gosh. They're not, they're not doing it yet. Let's put it that way. Um, and I think, and I think, hopefully, what I'm doing with uh, with it, and 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 just for your listeners, I mean, I, I don't know if you guys play clips, but I mean, you're welcome to to play the 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 audio holds up. I mean, you don't necessarily need a visual to uh, to to understand what it's about just by listening to the narration and the mix and everything else. Um, but yes, it's 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 recreating uh, lost rides uh, so that future generations can see and hear and feel. And experience them um, and share them, uh, uh, you know, um, moving forward. I think that a lot of like technology with uh, 
theme park rides and attractions is always very forward leaning. And uh, it's all about like, what can we do next? Well, what if we stop and look back and see like, well, what can we preserve? You know, like what can we, um, we you know, the, I think of theme park rides as mechanical performance art. And we, we preserve so many uh, forms of art, uh, paintings, um, you know, uh, sculpture, music, literature, film, architecture. All of these things, by the way, seem to be encompassed in the beauty of a dark ride, uh, or any ride, really. And yet we don't seem to give it that respect. And um, it seems like, and I don't know if it's because there's theme park rides, they're associated with, you know, the carnival culture, it, they're, they're thought of less as, you know, less than. Um, I, I don't know why we're not paying more attention to this. Because, I mean, if you think about a ride at Disney and uh, say, let's just say uh, Journey Through Inner Space, right? which I would have loved to experience. Uh, and I would like to if we could make this thing happen. Um, there are hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people from all over the world that have this unified cultural experience. And what if we could share that? And like that, that there's something like, I have nothing in common with somebody in Australia or, you know, uh, or, 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 or or France, or anywhere in the world, but like, if we, you know, we could talk about that ride. If I meet somebody overseas and they went on the same ride I did, I, I will never stop talking. And, pro and if it's a good ride, they won't either. And we'll like become very good friends, you know? So I think that there's this kind of unifying uh, quality about, uh, about being able to, to, to make it, uh, to, 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 and again, I emphasize this also in the presentation, you know, it spans across the ages. Grandparents and grandchildren, you know, can share an experience that they, you know, th that they can u be unified over the, the experience of a, of, a, of, a, of a moment that is very personal and very important to, um, you know, a grandparent or a parent that's no longer available. So to take them there and actually to take your kids or your grandkids and kind of share that experience, I think is a great thing for, you know, just uh, unifying, you know, uh, families. And I don't know, may, I mean, I, 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 does that sound crazy? I mean, I, 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 maybe it's, maybe I'm thinking that it's a much bigger idea than it is. I mean, it's really just, it, when it comes down to it, it's just a theme park ride. And not even that, it's really just, it's a simulation of a theme park ride. Well, since, since this entire thing began, have you ever been in touch with the Walt Disney Company? I have, um, and I'm, I'm going to tell you as much as I can. Uh, I haven't signed anything uh, that says I can't talk to you about it, but I do uh, owe the emissaries that it, it went farther up the ladder than I could have possibly imagined. It was looked at by uh, someone very high up uh, that would be giving a presentation at D23, that has given presentations at D23. Um, and that came through uh, just a, uh, you know, a strange, just fortunate uh, or, and, and indeed fortuitous uh, uh, connection of uh, friends. And because they brought this through uh, unofficially through back channels and it got seen by people. And I, I can tell you, I think without naming any names, uh, what the feedback was is that it will never be a brick and mortar attraction. It will not be, you know, as we see in the in the video, which I, I I'm very proud of what I created with like the dome and the mouse ears and the moss crawling up the out the mouse ears and the the, the sculpture garden of Imagineers and and they would never invest in that, but they may still uh, be interested in pursuing uh, just a mobile app. And ultimately, what it came down to was the um, they, my representative um, uh, said to me that why would they pay for their own IP? And I likened it to a spec script for a TV show. 
So it, it's repurposing their IP. That's what we were really uh, trying to sell at the time. When we were trying to sell it, we're not trying to sell it anymore. But um, but uh, but it uh, yeah, it was basically um, uh, I I said like, look, if I'm going to write a uh, an episode of the Brady Bunch. I'm not selling Sherwood Schwartz, Marsha and Jan and Alice. I'm selling them a spec script of like a repurposing of that IP, and that's what the Ride Archive was. And uh, and the, what I heard back, Disney doesn't play well with others. And I wasn't sure what that meant, and I didn't ask, and I should have, but like I I didn't ask because I was so. Uh, grateful for like the support that I was getting from this person and I didn't want to like test him and you know I, I didn't want to get any further into it with him um, but I took that to mean is that they don't well they, they have a very strict like un, no unsolicited um, you know ideas policy uh, I think even before I got that far I, I there was a friend of mine in New York who went to college was a college roommate of like uh, a VP of Imagineering and and he said oh just call him it's gonna be fine I was like really he's gonna be okay with this you know it's like uh, yeah, okay and I called him and the, and the, and he was driving and it was like the phone call was it, it lasted five minutes and I and he said like you know you can tell me all about your idea as long as it has nothing specifically to do with Disney and I was like I'll call you back <laughs> Like, I was like, that's pretty specific. I mean, and that's the thing is you can repurpose this for Universal or whatever, but Universal doesn't have the heritage that that amazing, like, uh, well of heritage to draw from that Disney does. I mean, and I still think, I don't know. I mean, you could do it for what? I mean, what do you have? The, I don't know, the backlot tour from the 1970s. You have certainly confrontation, but it's not... It, it, you know, it's just not the same. And maybe somebody else will do it. You're not, I mean, certainly Six Flags doesn't have a lot of history to draw from. You know, they're going to be like, oh, it was a different kind of roller coaster. Yeah, it, yeah Disney's history is definitely extreme, and I think the fandom is extreme as well. So, mm -hmm. so you, you were talking about the, in the video, you do mention an actual building and stuff, but I will tell you, when I watched it, I was like, okay, the, first of all, the visuals of that building, like with the old attraction vehicles and stuff covered in moss, what a cool mm. visual. But mm. admittedly, I was like, okay, that's not where the gold in this idea is. The gold is in the app. The gold is in the uh, home experience. At least that's personally mm. how I felt. I don't know how, mm -hmm. Pat. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I think that's like kind of the more realistic approach of it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, although, mm -hmm. like I said, I thought it was real when I watched. So I was like, oh my God, they're going to build this. That's amazing. But uh, mm -hmm. but yeah, I definitely see the app thing being more doable. And you mentioned yeah. the idea of taking the past attractions and they would be created in CG since they don't necessarily have video of it. Mm -hmm. and But like mm -hmm. more current ones using updated cameras and stuff. So it's really... right quite an incredible idea um mm -hmm. and even the scavenger hunt thing of going to locations in the oh, parks yeah. where th that was yeah. one of the coolest you remember mm -hmm. that pat they uh for those of you who haven't seen it they um basically if you go to a location where attraction used to be in the parks it would uh you know something on the app would click mm -hmm. in and show you the original attraction which is so cool so yeah. I mean, I feel like the possibilities are pretty endless. Um, but at this point, you you did say that Disney uh, is interested, but not interested. So, oh yeah, no. But I also, I mean, yeah, the the, the kind of uh, augmented reality uh, approach that that you're referring to that was something that was uh, definitely uh, you know I, I thought of, and then I kind of I was like, people aren't going to get it, and then Pokemon Go happened. And then it became like impossible to ignore the Bulbasaur in the room. Uh, so <laughs> we, so so I, so you'll notice the narrator doesn't speak to that, but that's you know I think absolutely I think that's it's a very simple and inexpensive way to uh, to uh, to to view these rides. At this point, it's not yeah, real, yeah. but you do have a petition, I believe, that you're got going on the website, and your yeah. hope is to get enough signatures to get Disney to look at it more seriously. Is that what's going on? Yeah, that's that's the base. I mean, I really want people just to get interested in it. Um, I, I, you know, it, it took it to Disney with uh, the kind of expected results. Um, it's I'm in a weird position. I I've had kind of a tenuous relationship with Disney in the early, uh, or I should say, late '90s. 
um, I made a video game called Los Disney's, uh, which um, they were not happy about. Um, it was uh, it was basically um, oh, uh, okay. So it was an Entertainment Weekly, Details Magazine, Wired. Uh, picked it up, and uh, it was really like a totally innocent project. It was like based on conspiracy theories and urban legend and all the great things like, you know, about Disney, but taking them all as like Bible fact, you know, like, you know, a gospel truth, and uh, and compiling it into a narrative for a game. And so I'll tell you what it's about, and only because I rehearsed it a million times uh, and had to say it a lot, was, um, and, and remember, this is before where we are now, but so this is a portrayal of the future. Uh, takes place in the year 2015, five years after the Disney Corporation takes over the, the peninsula of Florida and makes it their own country called Los Disney's, hence the title. Your job is to infiltrate the state capital, formerly the Magic Kingdom, uh, where President, uh, President Michael Eisner plans on thawing out uh, the cryogenically suspended head of Walt Disney, uh, essential to his plots of world domination. But doing so initiates a doomsday device that sends nuclear warheads to demolish uh, every major metropolitan center in the world, uh, paving the way for what they would call Disney Planet. And in the end, I mean, it's still up. You can go to losdisneys.com and, 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 and play it. It's got graphics that are better than Doom, but worse than Minecraft. Um, but uh, it, but it's, 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 a, it's a fun little story, but I'll just tell you how it ends. It turns out you don't win the game, you just finish it. It turns out you were working for Eisner all along. And it was just kind of like this, this observation of uh, you know, globalization and everything. And I thought it was really fun. And also, in a way, um, for me to kind of visit the parts, to recreate, again, it's weird. I have this whole history of just trying to recreate the parks without being there because, I mean, you guys are very fortunate. I, I understand that you're close to the parks and it's someplace that you can go to frequently where it was like this kind of special treat, uh, you know, uh, when I was a kid and then in my 20s I was very poor and so, but I wanted to go to Disney. And so I was like, I'm going to make my own Disney, you know, and so I, I recreate a lot of the rides and everything and and uh, in, the, in the game and, and uh, uh, even before that, I, I brought around, like my last trip to Disney was in my teens with my parents. And I, I walked around the park with like a, um, before YouTube and anything else, like with a Panasonic VHS camcorder. And like, it was like the size of a microwave. And you, like, and I, I just documented all of the, you know, like Veritas man with a movie camera. It's very cinema verite, very, you know, I didn't photograph myself or my family. It was just like, I am a person going through and experiencing this. And um, and I watched that all for, you know, like that kept the magic in my heart for like 10 years, you know, uh, because I didn't have the means to like experience it. And, you know, even when I was like even younger, like I made it, I made a model of Epcot Center. I started with a soccer, uh, with a, a golf ball for, for Spaceship Earth. But then I was like, oh, this is this scale. I want to get into these buildings and lift off the roofs. And I want to go into Communicore East and West and, uh, and create that too. And so that wasn't, that scale didn't work out. So I spray painted a soccer ball silver. And like, so in my parents' basement, I started creating a model of, so, it, so it's weird that I, I actually have this longstanding history of trying to recreate Disney with, you know, uh, even though in some cases it actually <laughs> was right there for for one to enjoy, but certainly not when you're 13 and not in your 20s when you're going to film school in Rochester and, you know, and then um, and then finally, yeah, so um, my my trip, my first adult trip to Disney World, which is just a mind blowing thing, like when you're a grown up and you get to go to Disney for the first time, it, it, untethered by parents is just a whole new experience. And um, and I remember taking my girlfriend to Epcot and I really wanted to see Horizons. And, um, and I remember going back and forth between what was once World of Motion, I got that, I, under, I recognized that building. And then I went over to Universe of Energy, but, but it was so weird that like going back and forth and seeing that Horizons wasn't there, there wasn't an overlay, destruction was just, you know, vanished. And, and that was completely traumatic for me, clearly, that I had to go go ahead and, and make this thing. And if you go online, you see like bulldozers tearing, you know, uh, horizons down. And it's just, uh, actually, don't go to the internet and see that. It's, it's terrible. 
but uh yeah well it inspired ridearchive.com which is a great thing uh jay thank you so much for being on the show i encourage everybody to go to ridearchive.com sign that petition check out that video because i want it to be real patrick do you want it to be real heck yeah well jay thank you so much for being on the show um a sincerely awesome awesome website so thank you very much Thank you so much, guys. Thanks again to Jay Huddy for coming on the show and telling us all about his website, RiotArchive.com. But, Pat, of course, when we check out websites like this, mm -hmm. it gets our brains going and wondering what would be some of the attractions that you want to see in it and I want to see in it. Well, I definitely wrote down the top five list. Okay. Because surprisingly, though, similar to Jay, uh, four out of my five are from Epcot. Oh, okay. Let's see. So, uh, number five, I had Cranium Command. Wow, interesting choice. All right. Body Wars. Okay. Horizons, as well as Jay. Mm -hmm. World of Motion. And then over at Magic Kingdom, Extraterrestrial Alien Encounter. Oh, okay. Fair <laughs> enough. And some of those you've never experienced. Yeah, and exactly. Some, of course, you have. Mm -hmm. um, my list would be, and some of these are shows as well and parades and such, because I included that in the list. I don't know if Jay necessarily was, but um, Spectro Magic, mm -hmm. because I love Spectro Magic. America on Parade, which we've talked about in a 4th of July episode because it's so weird. Uh, I actually want to witness this. I, I want to see the original Carousel of Progress mm. because, I mean, obviously it's one of my favorites. I believe one of your mm. favorites as well. I'd love to see the original show. Um, I would also love to see the original MGM Studios tour. Okay. Which I think I did. It used to be like two hours long, the original tour. I think I did experience it because I went to the park in 89, but I don't remember all of it. So I'd love to experience that. And Horizons is on my list mm -hmm. because it's a sequel to the Carousel of Progress, which is one of my favorites. And I may have done Horizons as a kid. I certainly don't remember yeah. it. So that would be my five. That's your five. Listen, go check out RideArchive.com. Seriously, watch the video. Sign the petition. It's fantastic. Uh it excites me a lot. So yeah. other than that, I think that means it's trivia, trivia time. time. Pat, you want to hit me or shall I hit you? Yeah. He's going to hit me. Okay, I'll hit you. Um, so we're, uh, we're, I just mentioned the Carousel of Progress. Yeah. And there um, have been some updates. Actually, the original show, the first scene was 1900, then 1920, then 1940, mm -hmm. and then sometime after 1967. That was the original show. But it has been changed, obviously, through the years, although the earlier scenes are pretty much the same. Uh, how many times has it been changed, and do you know what years they updated the show? Ooh. Um, I'm going to guess three. That's wrong. Four. That's wrong. Two. That's wrong. Five? Five times. Whoa. It's been updated five times. And any guesses on the year? So it originated in the 1964 World's Fair? Mm-hmm. Uh, is it 1962? Is it 62 to 64? Yeah. I always get confused. The 1962. First 62. Okay. Uh, 1975. Nope. Earlier. 1970. Earlier. 1968. Earlier. 1966. Later. 1968. Okay, that was the first year you got that right. What's the second one? 1978. 78 is incorrect. Earlier. 1976. Earlier. 1973. Later. 1974. Later. 1975. 75. So we got 67, 75. Then the next one 67, is? 67, 75, 82. Ooh. Very close. Earlier. Earlier. 81. 81. And then, now this one's surprising, 1981 to... 1982. No. <laughs> a little later. 1983. No. 84. No. In the 90s. 85. 1985. 90. So for 81, 85, that's an update. And the last update was in... 85 to... 99. A little earlier. Think, Na think Jurassic Park. You don't know what year Jurassic Park came out? I know. 1993. 1993. Yes. So 67, 75, 81, 85, and 93 were the updates for the Carousel of Progress. It's a lot. That is a lot. Uh, I think we're due for one. An update. Up Just an update. An update. Okay. You got some trivia for yeah, me? Yeah, mine is kind of similar. Okay. I had an honorable mention attraction. Okay. Again, at Epcot. And that's uh, Journey to Imagination. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, which also had some updates. Yeah. Do you know how many uh, in the year? In how many and the year? Mm-hmm. 
I similarly say yes. I think it's just one. Mm-mm. Okay, now it's basically a new ride. It's not. I can't, I can't even call that an update. Um, three updates. Three updates. So it opened in eighty two. Eighty three. Oh, it didn't open with the park? Mm-hmm. Interesting. It opened in 83. I'm going to say there was an update in 92? Nope. 93? No. 94? No. Wrong way? Up. 99? Yes. 1999, there was an update. And then? And then, and oh, when was this new one made? I feel like it's been around for a while. 99, like 2007? Six? Earlier. It's a ve- the Whoa. second one was very oh. short as well. 2004? No. Lower. Three. Lower. Two. Two. 2002. So 99 and 2002. 2002. So wait a sec. There was the original attraction in 1983. Original attraction called Journey into Imagination. With Figment. <clears throat> no, that's what it's called now. Oh, I didn't, I was just saying. Original with... attraction was Journey into Imagination. Okay. Then in 99, it was changed to Journey into Your Imagination. Ew. And then in 2002, it was Journey into Imagination with Figment. Okay, but the second one wasn't a drastic change. No, right? the first and second was still with Dreamfinder. Interesting. And then without Dreamfinder and then Figment. Fun. Well, guys, this was such a fun yeah. episode. Leave us comments below. Let us know which rides you would most like to see if Ride Archive was a real thing. Of course, go to ridearchive.com and check that out. And um, between episodes, you got to hang out with us, guys, in places like Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. You can listen to us on iTunes and SoundCloud. Go to our blog posts on Tumblr. We're everywhere. We're everywhere, and all that can be found at DisneyCoastToCoast.com. Thanks for joining us this week. Have a fantastic week, everybody. We will see you next time. Bye. Bye. Thanks for listening to Disney Coast to Coast. Have a magical day. Jingle bell. Jingle bam. Jingle bam. That's the, that's the official way to say it, guys. Whenever you refer to this show, please go jingle bell, jingle bell. Bam. Yeah. Done. Uh, in fact, we're that's the only way we'll refer to it on this show from now on. There you go. Okay? Every future episode, jingle bell, jingle bam.